So the next recipe, um, we're going to be focusing on snacks. So really important too, in order to stay energized and fueled for throughout your day, um, you want to be able to have kind of snacks on hand. Um, so kind of thinking about as your body as a car. So just like you need gas in the car tank to keep on going and moving strong, same thing, food acts as fuel, fuel in your body and you'll need that too. So you do want to make sure that, you know, there's no more than four hours between your meals. Um, you know, making sure that you're having snacks kind of in between those meals. Um, so we're looking at something that um, I love to snack on and figured we would share with you, especially for those who like savory and crispy snacks. Mm. This is a great option. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're using chickpeas. Um, we're using them two ways. So the recipe that you have is almost like a, like a two-parter. Um, but again, the idea to, you know, to make it easy, uh, we want this to be sustainable. We all want it to make it, you know, a very complicated dish. So uh, one thing is sort of setting your, your pantry up and organizing your kitchen. It's going to make it, I think, a little bit more um, accessible, a little bit easier, a little bit more enjoyable to get into the cooking process, right? So things like canned beans, frozen vegetables, things that have a long shelf life that you can, you know, stock up and just leave it there. You don't have to, it doesn't, have, um, doesn't, um, go bad quickly, it's just a lot easier to get uh, from cooking to, to eating. Uh, so chickpeas, I think, is a nice nice one to get into. We're going to make uh, a soup, but we're going to start off with a snack, with a crispy chickpea sort of crunch. Mm -hmm. uh, these are delicious. Um, and so what you want to do is can chickpeas, drain them, um, and then dry them. And the key is really to, to dry them well. Sorry? And rinse. Rinse. Drain and rinse. Yes. Dry. Right. So, and this removes any sort of, well, it's like a liquidy paste when you find it in the can, but it also takes away at least 50% of the sodium, mm -hmm. right? So that's something you want to kind of throw yeah. away. You and could also buy the ones that have low sodium or reduced sodium, um, but either way, just make sure you're draining and rinsing. Yeah, so we're using a clean dish towel and just dry them as well as you can. This is to make them really nice and crispy. Mm -hmm. Like you can skip all this and just go into the oven and it's still delicious, but to make them really nice and crispy, I'm giving you the, these are the tricks. These are the ones that you <laughs> want to follow. So dry them really well. If you see any of the, the peels, the skins of the chickpeas, um, you can take those off as well. That also really helps to make them really crispy. It is an extra step. It does take a little bit longer. Um, again, not absolutely necessary, but sometimes the skins will trap a little bit of that water in there and it doesn't allow them to really get nice and crunchy. So you can take a few of those off. Otherwise, we're going to put them into a bowl and, and we're going to season them. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Yes, we're going to the olive oil. You can use any neutral oil as well, like grapeseed oil, canola oil, works really, really well. Um, and then I'm gonna add, you can season it with whatever you want. So I'm gonna add turmeric, a little bit of turmeric, yeah. and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. So cooking with any types of herbs and spices is providing those antioxidant properties. <laughs> Turmeric is definitely one that has um, lots of anti-inflammatory properties as well. So you know, just sprinkling a little bit in a dish like this, putting it in a soup, a smoothie, really good to add. And you do want to remember to pair it with the, the black pepper, mm. right? The curcumin, which is the thing, the um, the component that gives that yellow golden color in the turmeric um, is better absorbed, so that's the properties that you want when you combine it with peppercorn, which is found in black pepper. Mm -hmm. okay, so kind of that pairing together is yeah. really important. Yeah, those go, and they taste really well together yeah. as a pairing too. Uh, but again, whatever you want to season them with, I've made this before with smoked paprika, uh, so it has sort of like a barbecue. Mm -hmm. You can do Parmesan cheese and lemon zest. You can do just dried chili. herbs, chili, like whatever you want to add to this. Just don't add any liquid because mm -hmm. you want to make sure like the oil, the fat is fine, but you, you want to make sure that they crisp up really nice. So we have our chickpeas. 
We're gonna put them onto a baking sheet, line with parchment, and just make sure to spread them out so that, again, yeah. they don't sort of get soggy on t and while they're sitting on top of each other. You want them to and dry so, out. And, you know, when you're choosing your snacks, you want to aim for snacks that have protein. Why? Protein is something that will keep you full for a little bit longer. So, you know, to go to, from one meal to the next. Um, we also know that protein is important, right? Again, like I mentioned earlier, to help build and repair those muscles and provide you with the energy you need. And chickpeas are a great option because they're your plant-based proteins. So, of course, you know, as um, you know, the best diet that we ha can recommend for cancer survivors it is one that is mostly plant-based. So it doesn't mean being completely vegetarian, no uh, animal foods whatsoever. But when you think of those proportions of how much you're having, you want to have mostly plant-based foods. Um, and some people think of, oh, chickpeas, they're not the tastiest, but making them with different flavors and cooking them in different ways can definitely um, help inspire you to use them in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. So the chickpeas in the oven, uh, 400 degrees for 30 minutes and then turn the oven off and just leave them in there okay if you can leave them like 15 minutes good if you can leave them up to an hour the longer that they stay that sort of residual heat it's going to get lower and lower because the oven is off but it's going to continue to dry them out and it's going to get really really nice and crunchy so if you can do them up to an hour like just leave them in there go ahead do whatever else you got to do and you know set a timer and then take them out don't after. Forget. Don't forget them. But I mean, the oven's off. So I mean, even if you forget them, it's just going to continue to dry out. Um, but the idea is you want them to look like this. So this is what they look like. Uh, uh, you can keep these like in a little Tupperware after, you know, mm. keep them inside your pantry. They're delicious, delicious snack. Um, do you want to try one? Yes. See, just so you can hear the crunch. Let's see if, <laughs> if we can. Oh. Ah, that was better than I expected. That's a good well crunch. done. Yeah. Can you freeze them? Um, no. you can you can freeze them, but I mean they'll be gone before. Yeah, yeah. It, the problem is defrosting <laughs> them after. You're gonna lose a lot of that that crispiness. Right, right. Um, they're complete like they're pretty much dried out, so they'll last in a little Tupperware for like a week. You know, in your pantry, yeah. you're good to go. They're great. Yeah. So, pretty exciting. Yeah. Snack done. But we're not done with the chickpea. We have another can of chickpeas. So we have right. two cans of chickpeas. One, we made the snack. We'll put this to the side for a second. And for the second one, we're going to make a really, really easy soup. Um, again, another you know quick, easy to go recipe from something from your pantry uh, with some sip, simple flavorings. And, and, totally. um, and we'll pair them together. But obviously, you can have them separate. Yeah. So the first thing I want to do, pot, medium heat, a little bit of olive oil, and we're going to be adding a ton of garlic um, because I love garlic, mm -hmm. but also garlic has a lot of flavor, right? So even with some minimal ingredients um, that you might have around the house, garlic, you're going to get a lot of bang um, uh, for, for what it is, right? A, a big punch of flavor. So all I'm doing is taking the, the garlic, you can peel it, and then just giving it a nice smash the longer you kind of leave it to sit like this mm -hmm. the better too right yeah so the um, garlic even onions like they're all co coming from the allium family um, which is really high in antioxidants but one trick is to actually leave um, so once you kind of bruise it to leave it in the oxygen um, with the air for just a little bit because that helps um, then the all those antioxidants being better absorbed in your body. Um, so you could kind of feel it, and you could actually smell it. So that sulfur-containing smell, um, that kind of is an indication that you've allowed it to aerate a little bit with the oxygen. Yeah, and then I'm using some rosemary. Uh, again, you can use whatever herbs you want. Um, this is fresh rosemary. Um, one thing also to sort of wake up the rosemary is you also want to give it a little bit of a crush. And this is a good idea with any herbs. Um, 
you know if you've ever rubbed like a little bit of oregano or a little bit of basil, it all of a sudden it, it amplifies the flavor, it amplifies the, the aroma, you really start to smell it. And it's the same thing, you know, when you're cooking, you want to wake it up a little bit before we actually add it to uh, our pot. So our crushed garlic goes in and our rosemary goes in. And again, just a, just a gentle heat. We have a medium heat. We want to add just a little bit of color. You're probably going to start smelling it soon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, hit, it'll hit the back of the room soon as well. And the idea is that we want to just flavor, flavor that olive oil, right? So two ingredients, well, three. Olive oil, the garlic, and the rosemary. But the rosemary you can swap out with any other hearty uh, herb. Uh, you wouldn't use anything that's soft. So basil, parsley, cilantro, that'll destroy a lot of that nice flavor. Uh, but things like thyme, bay leaf, sage, rosemary, those are heartier herbs. You can add those now. You can add those at the beginning. And we're just going to get a little bit of color. So about you know three minutes, four minutes uh, until we want to add the rest of our ingredients. Cool. All right. So. So next is chickpeas. Chickpeas, yes. yes. So uh, once we get a little bit of color. Um, so definitely, you know, during this phase when you're, you want to make sure that you plan ahead, right? So planning ahead means thinking about those ingredients that you need to make your recipe or first kind of thinking about the recipe, then thinking about the ingredients. Planning, so this is what I was talking about, about putting things into your calendar of, okay, I'm going to take this amount of time to go to the grocery store and then schedule another specific time to actually prepare the food. Um, so that kind of helps as well. And putting these kind of appointments or treating these tasks as appointments and putting them into your calendar Treating them like a doctor's appointment or a business meeting can, you know, showcase to you that they're they're really important and that there's something that, you know, it's not they're not going to do it or later on. So kind of putting that in and scheduling it in is really important to build those healthy habits and making sure that they're they're going to stick for the long run into the 2019. Okay, so we've got some nice color. If I flip. The, car, the garlic, We've got a little bit of browning. I could probably let this go even a little bit more. You don't want to burn the garlic. Um, it'll just take, make everything taste bitter. Mm -hmm. um, but we have quite a bit of flavor from the, the rosemary and the garlic at this point. So again, a tin of chickpeas that goes in. Any beans will actually work really well with yeah. this. Yeah. And what's again really great, you're adding your protein. You know, a lot of kind of soups that we think of um, often are vegetable-based, but when you're adding in your bean, you're adding in your protein, you're adding, adding in, um, you know, different types of nutrients as well. And again, going to keep you fuller for longer. Now we want to add a little bit of lemon. So I'm starting with lemon zest. So wash the lemon really well. Uh, using the outside, you can take a grater or these little micro graters, these uh, rasps. Um, they do a great job of just, just taking the outside. Um, the white part is a little bitter, so you want to avoid the white part. And you're just, as you grate, you just move the lemon so that you're always getting a fresh piece of that uh, yellow lemon zest on the outside. Mm -hmm. And this is going to perfume and add a lot of flavor to the dish as well. Another thing to think about when you're snacking is, you know, Often, like on the flip side, you know, we talk about, okay, you want to snack often in order to keep your energy levels up, but it's also important to check in with your body. So, you know, listening to your hunger cues, are you hungry? You know, for those who, um, whether you want, you're looking to lose weight or gain weight, just kind of checking in to see, um, you know, how hungry you are. So maybe asking yourself on a scale of zero to 10, am I really hungry? Um, one, not hungry, 10, very hungry. If the answer is yes, well then kind of thinking about what are you hungry for. Um, so always kind of planning ahead and having healthier snacks on hand um, could help deter you from perhaps 
grabbing something like from a vending machine or a coffee shop that might not be as nutritious, which of course there's always room for those treats, but just then again kind of coming back and thinking about what you, your body actually needs is helpful. Perfect. Okay, so everything is pretty much added except for our liquid. I don't know if you can smell the lemon mm -hmm. at all. So the lemon zest, again, big aroma, big flavor. Um, and because we have the garlic, the rosemary, the, the lemon, a lot of flavor, I can just add water to this as my liquid base and I'm good to go. Uh, again, keeping my ingredient list down. Um, um, and mostly with things that you know you have around the house. So just some fresh water. If you have stock, chicken stock, vegetable stock, even better. That's just going to add more flavor. But just water alone. Yeah, and if you want to boost up those calories, then you can use, um, I guess, a cream or any other type of um, higher caloric liquid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's it. We'll let that simmer for 15 minutes, and. You can serve it like that, it's delicious, or um, you can puree it. The lemon juice, you add right at the end, mm -hmm. uh, just so it stays really nice and fresh. If I continue to cook the lemon juice, you'll lose, you'll lose most of that really nice, fresh, fresh, bright flavor. So that we'll put at the end, but after you puree it, again, with just a few ingredients, you get this really, really nice creamy soup. Use a smaller pot, you don't have to. <laughs> but you can, uh, this is for like a few portions, like four portions, but you can, you can make a little bit more. So I'm just stirring it up. Mm. So it's got this really, really nice color, really beautiful texture as well. And that's pretty much just from the chickpeas. But a lot of flavor from the garlic and the rosemary and the lemon. And again, just minimal, minimal ingredients. And that's, I mean, delicious as is. But if we have the, the little crunchy yeah. chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Put them on top. A little bit of those on top. Yeah. And then, if you want, a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. yeah. And you could freeze this, right? Like in um, muffin mm -hmm. tins. Um, so you have those pre portioned sizes or put them in Tupperwares. Yeah. Um, again, planning ahead, soups, freezing them yeah. is a really great idea to. Again, creating these healthier habits for yourself to make sure that you have uh, ways that you could eat well in your back pocket. Yeah, the muffin tins. So one thing um, I would look into, this has been great for a lot of uh, batch cooking, long-term storage, is the they have these flexible ones. These are like the food grade uh, flexible muff muffin tins. They're fantastic for stock, uh, for stock, not for socks, for stocks. <laughs> Don't put your socks in here. Uh, soup. <laughs> And freeze them like this, and then they just pop out, and then you have like little pucks of mm -hmm. soup, and then you put those in like in a freezer bag, and you can kind of store them up. This is this is great uh, to use, but um, yeah, yeah cool. that's it. Perfect. Second recipe. Yes.